Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're here representing David Mavis. My name is Julie, and this is my partner, John, and we're here today to talk to you about BioVail Corporation. So first of all, we're just gonna go through a quick agenda. First of all, John is gonna talk about the pharmaceutical industry as a whole. Then we're gonna talk about some revenue recognition issues that we have seen in the past. Next, we're gonna talk about channel stuffing, legacy products, and we're gonna wrap it up with share profitability analysis and then con conclude with some final thoughts. So I'm gonna pass it off to John to give an industry analysis. Thanks, Julie. So first of all, I'm just gonna tell you about the pharmaceutical industry, some of the pros and cons of the industry, some of the things that really affect the profitability of a pharmaceutical company, and some of the downfalls and certain liabilities that a firm in that industry can face. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you about the market. The pharmaceutical market is a huge market. It's over $400 billion and it's growing because our population is aging. One of the most successful and critical factors in the pharmaceutical industry is the development of patents. Patents are essential for pharmaceutical companies. What they allow them to do is to take all that time they've invested in research and development fees and make it into a product that they alone can market and sell at a certain price. Nobody else can produce this product or they face they could face certain liabilities such as a lawsuit. Now this really gives a certain stream of revenue for that company over a set period of time. But unfortunately, after a certain amount of time, that patent is over and this um, creates the involvement of generic pills. Now these generic pills or patents uh, or generic products don't have any patents involved with them so they are free for anybody to make. So this is kind of a downfall because you, they can no longer depend on that revenue stream. Another problem with this industry is that there's a huge commitment of uh, research and development uh, money that must go into developing these patents. We've seen this industry has had some trouble in the past with capitalization of certain things that should have been expensed. For example, uh, lots of research and development costs towards a certain pill, but then nothing coming out of it, and they capitalize that when it should have just been expensed. So that affects their balance sheet and their opinion as an investor of that company. Finally, another um, con to this industry is that it's highly regulated by the government. Now, this is kind of necessary because certain pills and patents would not be developed because it wouldn't just be economically feasible, there'd be no profit in it for the company. But at the same time, governments can also control and set prices for pharmaceutical companies that really limit the amount of profit they can bring in. Finally, the last kind of liability that a pharmaceutical firm could possibly face is the possibility of lawsuits or future liabilities. Yes, these products go through extensive testing, but there's always that off chance that there could be a failure down the line or somebody could face a lawsuit in the future. So I'm going to show you a few um, issues that we found with BioVail as a whole. So one of the things I want to talk to you about is called revenue recognition. There's two types of revenue recognition uh, when you ship products to a distributor or a supplier. One of these is called FOB shipping and the other one is called FOB destination. FOB stands for free on board. So on free on board shipping, as soon as you ship the product, you recognize the revenues. For free on board destination, you do not recognize the revenues until they have reached the destination. So in the case of BioVail, they faced an unfortunate accident in September where their truck um, collided and they lost some of their profit. Now they had already recognized this profit, so that was realized as free on board shipping when it should have been realized as free on board destination. I'm, now I'm going to pass it off to Julie, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about revenue recognition. Thanks, John. So as John mentioned, uh, when the accident occurred in September, BioVail did uh, recognize that revenue as free on board shipping. So they recognize it at the moment that it shipped off. Um, now, he, we don't agree with that. Uh, the contract was to be FOB destination. And so they should have not recorded that revenue at all because it never reached the customer. But also, they did overstate their revenue as well. BioVail claimed that there was 10 to 20 million dollars worth of revenue in the truck. We actually did some calculations, as you can see on the screen, and we actually discovered that there was only about 4.4 million dollars worth of revenue. And that's a really big red flag for investors such as yourselves um, because 
as investors, you want to know that the company is reporting fairly to you and that you are getting an accurate representation of what's actually going on in the company. If, com if BioVail is saying that they're um, recognizing more revenue than they actually are, that's going to show you that they're being more profitable than they really are. And that's dangerous to you as an investor. We're also, I also want to talk to you a little bit about channel stuffing. Now, channel stuffing is an issue that we see with the, in a lot of different distribution firms and the pharmaceutical industry in general as well. Now, what channel stuffing is, is uh, shipping off a lot of product to a distributor when that distributor doesn't actually need it. So BioVille can ship off a bunch of product and recognize that revenue when there's not actually a demand for it. And therefore, they can recognize a lot of revenue when really there's no demand for that product or a little demand for that product. And so that's also dangerous because they're saving a lot of revenue when really they shouldn't be. We're also, I also want to talk a little bit about legacy products. Uh, legacy products are products in BioVail that used to have a patent but don't anymore. And as John talked about earlier, they're now generic products that anyone can make. BioVail is really reliant on one drug in particular, and that's Cardizem, which is worth about 40% of their total sales. This is really dangerous in two ways. First of all, it's really dangerous to be uh, reliant on one product because if that product fails, if there's not an interest in that product anymore, then the company in general is going to lose a lot of revenue. The other reason that it's dangerous is because it's not, it doesn't have a competitive advantage anymore. Anyone can make this product. And so as a pharmaceutical company, BioVail should be looking into products that can actually, uh, that they can actually patent and make a lot of money on. And as we noted, research and development costs have actually been going down. And so it shows that they're not as being as focused on finding new products or just relying on these legacy products. And that's really dangerous. So now I'm going to pass it to John, and he's going to talk about uh, the profitability analysis. Great. Thank you, Julie. So in the profitability analysis, we looked at five different firms within the pharmaceutical industry. The firm that came the closest to BioVail in terms of assets and liabilities was the firm Teva. Now, just to, we've only looked at two ratios. This is just a quick analysis of it. The two ratios we looked at were earnings per share and change in share price. So earnings per share is calculated basically by taking the net income of the company and dividing it by the number of shares outstanding. And the change in share price is taken by taking the share price at the end of the year, subtracting the share price at the beginning of the year, and then dividing by the beginning share price. So as you take note, BioVail's earnings per share is only $0.39, cents, where Teva's was $1.16. A big difference for similar size pairs. And change in share price was 3.8% for BioVail, and 26.74 for Teva. So that's a very large difference for very similar firms. So in conclusion, we would like to back up Treple's recommendation to sell this. Um, we realize that this is a very cutthroat industry and there's really not that much um, reliance in these legacy products that uh, BioVail is really relying on. And as we saw by the previous slide, there's low earnings per share being recognized as well. As I said before, there's high industry risk and with this revenue recognition concern that we talked about before, that's going to leave doubts in investors' minds. So we feel that we recommend, or we back up Treble in the conclusion to sell this. At this time, we'd like to ask you for any questions.